County Board of Commissioners for Tuesday, September the 14th. If you would this time, please rise for your petition, followed by our pledge. And I'll, I'll take it. By your heads. Um, Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight and ask for your blessings on this body and this community as we uh, discuss the issues that we face in this community and uh, hope that our decisions are, are pleasing to you. We ask that you continue to bless those that serve this community in every capacity uh, and uh, bless those that are um, continuing to battle uh, uh, this COVID pandemic and uh, look over those uh, who are serving our country in harm's way. These things we ask in your holy name. Amen. 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 Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great. Thank you. Okay, uh, before we get started, uh, Jason, I have one. Just got to talk about amending the agenda. Yes, Mr. Chairman, if the board would consider at staff's request adding two items to the agenda, uh, we would add item I under new business, a discussion of uh, right of way on Indian Trail. And then we would add item J, which would be discussion and potential approval of purchase of uh, sheriff's vehicle. Okay. Uh, is there a motion on the staff recommendation? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Um, all those in favor, just. Okay. Uh, next on the agenda is public hearing for SPX 2021-07 for a RV temporary residence at 235 Franklin Dale Road. Um, so, uh, Mr. Martin, you're signed up to make comments. Um, yes. You just address your comments to the board. You have five minutes. And, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Okay. So the public hearing is now open. So as I was saying, you have five minutes to address it. Yeah. And I'm sure some of this stuff will come up after Mr. Courier's uh, presentation. Sure. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, you, you yeah. may have an opportunity to say more based on Mr. Okay. Courier's presentation. Uh, I'm building a house on Franklin Hill. We've got foundation in, septic tanks in, wells in, power's run to it. Uh, we're fixing to start framing on it. And I want to live there in the camper, sort of watch over things uh, and be right there to build it. So that's what I'm asking for. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no other um, individual signed up. So is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Courier. Yes, sir. Uh, the applicant, as you've heard, is Mr. Frank <coughs> Martin, and this is a traditional RV request uh, during construction of his home. Uh, although this permit is a little older than they typically are. This is on 13.92 acres on Franklindale Road. Um, let's see. This is on the, the north side. It is a, the RV is visible as you drive by, uh, but not overly. As you can see, uh, this area of Franklindale is heavily wooded. It's AR zoned. It's uh, not densely populated. Uh, as your ordinances require and state law requires, you have criteria by which you must review these sorts of requests. And these are those criteria you'll see in the staff analysis that I've uh, done, a, a quick analysis. And basically, the questions are, that are asked or the, the standards that are set are about uh, any negative impacts of this type of use, the special exception, whatever it might be. Uh, any nuisance that might occur because of it. And this is no different than these other cases that you see. Traditionally, uh, this is just going to be an RV sitting there uh, temporarily while construction happens. Of course, there will be a deadline based on what you determine tonight. So staff uh, did not find any significant negative impacts uh, if this is approved. 
There are also a number of conditions of approval that are just in the ordinance. There are a lot of things that are required that's uh, nothing uh, unique or new, but it's, it, it is unique or new, at least to these RVs. So they've got to maintain the uh, utilities, they've got to be connected to the utilities, they have to have obtained them, they've got to get the permit. These are the sort of things required in the actual ordinance. So the staff recommendation is for approval uh, based on the fact that this is a temporary use only, it's not going to be permanent, and we traditionally approve these. There may be some conditions that you want to impose, but um, these generally are looked upon favorably for whatever period of time uh, you decide upon. At its August 9, 2021 meeting, the Planning Commission voted unanimously 5-0 to re recommend approval of this request. Uh, for 12 months. That's the period that they recommend. Uh, this is pretty much the best photograph of the property you're going to see. So the aerial, you'll see in the, uh, you can see the area of construction. There's the beginning of the foundation and the RV and a barn or a pole barn are being built right here. The driveway's here, so it's pretty much a straight shot as you'll see in the other photos. And there's the straight shot. So you can see the barn, which is not the home. It's an accessory structure. And then the RV is next to that to the right. This is looking back towards Franklin Dale from the barn site. And there's the foundation that's in that. And as you can see, this is an after the fact. Uh, the RV is already there. This, this happens in two ways. I think there was a misunderstanding in this particular case and what your definition of camping is. As you know, that we do allow 30 days and they are for camping. But the second part of the rule is that the camper's got to leave when you leave. And uh, Mr. Martin was under the impression that if he left but the RV stayed, he was okay. But that's not the, the standard in the ordinance. However, we also traditionally work with the uh, citizens that, okay, you're in the process, you're working towards getting permission to have this here, so as long as you're doing that in good faith in the process, staff normally does not, you know, uh, issue or initiate any code enforcement actions when they're in the process and working on it. And that concludes my staff report, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Anybody have any questions, Mr. Courier? So the, the, the original building permit was issued back in 2019? Yes, sir. That was for the house and all the structures? Yes, sir. How long is it going to take you to finish? Well, we had COVID hit two months later. Right. And then when COVID got a little better last September, lumber went through the roof. Now it's back down. I'm going to start framing in the next week or two. Uh, and I'm 66 years old. I'm not as fast as I used to be. So it's, you know, Eight or ten months, probably, to, to build it and get in. So you think you'll make the 12 months that we typically... I'd like 12 months, just in case. Anybody else have any other questions? Is there a motion on the staff recommendation? I'll make a motion to uh, allow the uh, RV with the 12 months of time limit. Okay. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion uh, to... Uh, allow for this RV at 235 Franklindale Road for 12 months. Any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, Ms. Jones. Commissioner Wilder? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ellington? Yes. Chairman Allen? Yes. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Welcome to Upson County. <laughs> All right, next on the agenda is uh, SPX 2021-08. It's a cell tower at 525 <coughs> Road and uh, Verizon Wireless General Dynamics of Roswell, Georgia. Uh, we have no one signed up, so is there uh, a right, motion to open the hearing? We'll move. Is there a second? Second. Excuse me? Oh, I was going to say I'm here, but if you guys don't You're the applicant? 
Yes, I am. Okay. I just got here a little too late. So. That's that's fine. Yeah. I think we have any questions for you. Okay. So uh, I have a motion made and seconded to open the hearing. All those in favor open the hearing. Hearing is now open. Um, is there anything you're going to want to add that, that to amplify what Mr. Courier may want to say? If we have any questions for yeah. you since you're the applicant, we'll probably direct them directly yeah, to you. I, I can just answer any questions if you'd like. I don't want to waste your time. If you just introduce yourself and your address sure. for the purpose of the record. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, my name is Brian Devine. My address is 3707 Hearts Place in Chamblee, Georgia. All right. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, no one signed up other than my comments. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Yeah. All in favor of closing the hearing? Hearing is now closed. Mr. Courier. Yes, sir. You have a very comprehensive packet, so my report on these is extremely short. I'll just hit the highlights. Um, the property owner is actually Martin Smith as a trustee for the Smith Revocable Living Trust. So as you've seen in these cases, they rarely buy the property or own it. They're leasing it from uh, the current property owner. The applicant is G General Dynamics for Verizon. Uh, this, the, each one of these sites gets an official name. This will be called the Logtown site. This is, uh, for those of you who've been on the board for a while, we, in the beginning we had a lot of monopoles, and now we seem to be trending towards these taller ones, which are the lattice, or the new, new uh, name they're giving them is self-supporting towers. So I don't know if this is a permanent trend, if we're going to see any more monopoles, but at least this is our, our trend now, is these lattice uh, style poles. Um, you'll see the justification is to improve wireless coverage and access to emergency service. This is in an underserved area, and you'll see some graphics in there that show the before and after, which is typically something we see once that uh, goes in. They're leasing a 100 foot by 100 foot lease space, uh, which is 0.23 acres. Um, if they had to basically lease enough space uh, for 100% fall in any direction, it would actually be 6.4 acres. So uh, this is considerably less, but you'll see this is sort of addressed to some degree in the condition recommended by the Planning Commission. There will be the six foot uh, chain link fence around it. There will be, it doesn't have to be any added uh, landscaping because as you can see in the, the photograph uh, that's in there, that's, there's already quite a bit of uh, vegetation around it. The horizon will initially be the primary tenant, but there's room for other tenants. Um, one thing we didn't address was public safety. I don't know if there's provision with this. That might be a question when asked. Um, Mr. Devine is whether or not there's any provision on the tower for uh, public safety uses. At its uh, August meeting, the Planning Commission voted on this, 5-0 to recommend approval. They did recommend one condition, and that's something that came up at your last tower. Uh, because there's this issue in our ordinance about basically um, collapse, uh, what, what I'll call a horizontal uh, catastrophic collapse as opposed to a vertical one. And we were told with that last tower that you approved that they can engineer it so that it does collapse if there's something major goes wrong vertically. And that was uh, something that the Planning Commission liked. So the condition that they uh, suggest is that there be a condition, the engineering. And we were told at the public a hearing at the, la at the planning commission meeting that, the, that this tower had not been engineered yet. So we're not asking them to go back and do anything, but the condition was that it, the engineering for this tower be that if there's a catastrophic collapse, it would be a vertical one straight down upon itself, as much as that can be done, as opposed to something that's a horizontal complete fall. And uh, that's my report, Mr. Chairman. I do have a couple of photos. This is the site. Um, you can see it again in the drawings you've got there, but looking at basically towards the front end in this area where the, uh, in the general area of that easement, um, so it won't, it'll be towards the south end. And there you see it located. And there's the typical view of what these things look like and the placement of the antennas. That's it, Mr. Chairman. No structures within 255 feet. Are there any? Yeah. I don't believe so. I can answer that question if you like. Uh, there aren't any residential structures within that radius. And as far as other towers are concerned, the closest existing tower is over five miles away. 
if if there was a need, is there space on the tower for um, public safety? Yes, there, there will be space. As, as you can see in the diagram right there, it's it'll be designed to accommodate a minimum of three additional carriers. And you know, so of course, if emergency services or any of the other carriers like at and or T-Mobile want to co-locate, it'll be available for them. Where are our coverage is down there? It's on the, the map of it right here. Well, I'm yeah, talking about uh, he's talking about public safety. Uh, yeah. public he's talking safety. about public safety. Uh, I mean, it's yeah, I think some of these other tower people were giving us room mm -hmm. to put on there and not charging us room. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. It hasn't been a need just yet. Right. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know what the coverage is right there. Well, cell phone coverage is on the map, but as far as the the, the, the sheriff's digital right. network, right. I haven't heard anything. I mean, we're we're on out on the water tower at Yatesville. Yeah, I think it, you talked about one time possibly needing uh, a fourth um, location down south, but that hasn't been the sheriff hasn't mentioned it. I think we're, we're, we're so far we're, we're managing with three locations. So you have the staff's recommendation. Is there a motion on uh, this? I have a motion that we get the staff recommendation. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Chairman, to include the condition? To include the condition, yeah. the one condition. To, the, and the condition is yes, to sir. that it would be engineered such that it would collapse upon itself. So with the condition, yes. Is that, is that your second? That's, that's my motion. It's your motion, and you're good with that as a yeah. second? Second. So, okay, so I have a motion made and seconded to approve with the condition as uh, we discussed uh, for this tower at this location. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Jones. Commissioner Wilder? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ellington? Yes. Chairman Allen? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. You can build one in my neighborhood if you don't build one. That's a big sign up sheet for yours. Okay, next on the agenda are public comments. We don't have anyone signed up for public comments. All right, so next on the agenda is the consent agenda. Gentlemen, you'll see on the consent you have your work session minutes from August 4th, joint project budget meeting minutes from August 19th. Regular meeting minutes from August the 24th and acceptance of the July 21 financials. Is there a motion on the consent? So moved. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion made and seconded to approve the consent. Ms. Jones. Commissioner Wilder? Yes. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ellen? Uh, yes, but everything but item B, I was not in attendance for that. I'm Chairman Allen. Yes. Okay. Thank you. New business, item E, discussion and consideration of the purchase of a generator for the Civic Center. Mr. Chairman, this was an item that was on um, the work session agenda for uh, July. I think it was the last time we discussed this. Um, one of the concerns that uh, the commission had at the time was that had the uh, generator size been evaluated to the need, um, so two things were done. Um, one, staff engaged the City of Thomaston Electrical Department to evaluate the size of the generator needed for the Civic Center, keeping in mind that it serves as, the, um, as our primary emergency shelter for um, natural disasters and other emergencies. Um, they did come and make an evaluation and made a recommendation um, that did not change the scope or the specs. Uh, so uh, it. it uh, it confirmed what the what the needs were. So then staff went to the next step and went back to each of the folks that uh, had bid on it initially, and um, they were offered to rebid, which is uh, you see the results of that on the on page two. I think there were there were eight companies that submitted. Uh, finance staff did an evaluation of the eight submissions and is recommending, and I want to make sure I get this right because there's so many of them, is recommending 
uh, Yancey Brothers Caterpillar brand uh, in the amount of $169,659. Uh, this would be a SPLOS purchase. Uh, one other thing to include, Mr. Chairman, this is also one of the, one of the work project items from our comp plan. Um, I think it was identified during the um, disaster um, mitigation planning from the, the last time we updated our emergency plans and it was added subsequently as part of our comprehensive plan. So uh, this would suit both of those needs. If you have any specific questions, our, our finance director is I, I do because I, I can't open it up. Uh, what, what, what size generator was it? Service contract. Yes, we did. Yeah. What, what was the term of that service contract? It's the warranty. Mm -hmm. Two, years. Two years. Two years. Two uh, years. That's the warranty now. Yeah. So we got a generator that was a hundred thousand dollars for, and we got a warranty on it, but it has to have periodic maintenance. He's going to perform that. Um, I don't have that documented in this procurement um, <clears throat> summary, but I do have that information, um, which is provided for the quote, I do believe, uh, the actual quote. There were so many pages to all the quotes. I did not include the part of the package, but they are available. <clears throat> and I stipulate that in the procurement summary, that those are available from request. So. Um, I, I don't know specifically to tell you how, you know, how the service contract works. Um, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, what I'll ask for is I'll, I'll ask for a, a motion on this, or you know, if you would. You'd like the lead time on this looks like uh, 12 to 8 lead time for order 12 to 18 weeks. This is something that we have been working on for some time. I don't think uh, we to table that to get that information. Right, through. right. No, I, I, I'm not recommending that we table it. But what I do do would I, I do would I would really like to see from here. Be really behind this is that we're we're going to get a, 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 a service contract with this because these things sit majority of the time. Um, you know, or is it going to be on a cycle system where it comes on maybe and, and powers up every so often? I mean, you know, just because you don't use it doesn't mean it, it it's, it's going to be diesel. It, you know, the filters got to be changed, additives got to be in the fuel. Uh, last thing we want to do is spend all this money has a big night nice generator then when we need it, it won't crank. Is it going to be diesel or is it going to be natural gas? Probably, it could be either, either or. I would, I would think it will probably be either or. Probably ordered either way. In most instances for commercial use it's probably going to be natural gas or propane. But it's just, it, it, believe it or not, for something that doesn't get used, it's a high maintenance item. <coughs> no good if it doesn't work. So you're going to... Um, I like to see a service contract. I, 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 I make a motion that we uh, uh, accept the bid from Yancey Brothers for the 500 kVA generator. But I, I would like uh, further discussion uh, at, a, at, a, at, a, at the next meeting on a, a service contract to go along with. Okay, so you put that in the form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. So I have a motion made and seconded to uh, approve the purchase for the 500 KVW 
uh, generator for the Civic Center from Yancey Brothers, and the dollar amount is $169,659 funds to be uh, appropriated for Splashed. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Jones. Commissioner Wilder? Yes. Commissioner McDonald? Yes. Commissioner Watson? Yes. Commissioner Ellington? Yes. Chairman Allen? Yes. That's a great point, Commissioner Ellington. Okay, item F. Discussion and approval of a recommendation to use Parish Construction as construction manager for at risk services for a judicial center. Mr. Yes, Chairman, um, I put a, a, a I put a very very condensed um, yeah. two page executive two page executive summary uh, for the purposes of the agenda tonight. Honestly, uh, this was an <coughs> item that was part of our last work session, um, so we're we're prepared tonight tonight to make staffs prepared to make the recommendation that we engage Paris Construction for the purpose of developing a construction manager at risk contract with a guaranteed maximum price for the construction of our judi judicial facility. Um, they, there are a few members of Parish in uh, the audience, so um, they may want to uh, address the board at some point, but we would essentially enter into uh, what would be a, uh, either a, an engagement letter or a memorandum of understanding with them until such time as they were you know, ready. We were ready to go to contract with them, so those contracts would come at a later date. Obviously, once um, we're probably close to, I think, and I'll let um, anyone correct me if I got this incorrect. But once we're 80 or 90 percent designed, I guess is about when we would see that guaranteed maximum price. Is that right? I'm getting nods from the back, so I'll accept that. So, um, so I'll defer to the board if they would like to uh, have. Any member of parish ad address any additional concerns or questions you might have before any actions taken. All right. Um, well, I, and, and for the benefit of the public, you know, so we we did address this at our work session, and there were eight companies that submitted uh, for consideration uh, staff, uh, along with. Uh, Commissioner Watson, because of his extensive construction background, vetted them. And uh, at our work session, as Jason said, we did have reps, uh, a, a great team from Parish that came and spoke to us uh, uh, at our work session. So, um, I does anybody have any questions? I mean, I don't. I mean, for the most part, my questions are answered at the work session. That's what I was. I was going to say, you know, so. Uh, lack of questions is a pretty good thing. You guys uh, did a did a great job presenting, and if you, you know if you don't get questions from us, there's usually something <laughs> wrong, or you did a really good job. In this case, I would I would applaud you for the, for the presentation that you did, and I would thank the staff and, and Commissioner Watson for the extensive work that went into preparing this and and, and doing all the analytics on this. So is. That said, there no be, be no questions. Uh, Jason, do you have anything you'd like to add, or no? I think it's, Mr. Chairman. I pretty, it might be worth mentioning that in addition to the high level of qualifications that they are offering, they are also offering the lowest price out of the eight firms. Yeah. So it was a uh, um, help that probably for the folks that did not have the um, the benefit of being at the work session. I mean, it's. Aside from everything else, it is uh, the lowest cost as a percentage of total construction. And since you were involved with it extensively, is there anything you'd like to add for public consumption? <coughs> well, one one thing because we did just get our um, design services RFP on the Georgia procurement site. I think it's going to be beneficial to get these guys signed up as soon as possible. They can have a seat on the committee as we're going through the design process reviewing those proposals so I'm eager to get them on board and look forward to working with them. I think they're going to be a great fit. I think um, one of the one of the things that I appreciated from your presentation was your commitment to uh, uh, bid on the jobs as they come up from within your own company treating your treating your your, your construction company as any other bid um, applicant and your commitment to use 
um, contractors from the local area as much as practical. Uh, understanding your, your commitment to make sure that uh, you're getting somebody that you can work with that will is capable of delivering what we expect you guys to expect them to deliver. Is there any but, other? Yeah, and one, one other thing, and you know, a good critical piece to this too is uh, we have one of the guys who'll be on the ground monitoring this project day to day. He's born and raised here, lives here. So I think that's going to provide an extra level of scrutiny when it comes to moving forward with the construction. And Mr. Turner, I'm sure you appreciate having a project in your own backyard that you're not commuting somewhere, right? That's a great commute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other comments or is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we approve Paris construction for the CMAR services for our judicial center. Is there a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded to um, uh, approve uh, parish construction as our C CMAR for this project uh, with the terms if anybody's interested they are they are available um, any other discussion hearing none Ms. Jones Commissioner Wilder yes Commissioner Jones yes Commissioner Watson yes Commissioner Ellington yes Chairman Allen yes thank y'all for coming appreciate it thank you I know you probably had a little further commute than your, 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 your mm -hmm. partner there Okay, well, let's move on then. Discussion and possible consideration of Resolution 18-2021 Classification and Compensation Plan Amendment for a Community Marketing Coordinator. Um, Jason. Uh, Mr. Chairman, so um, again, this is uh, being presented to the board for consideration uh, based on um, guidance from our last meeting and in discussion with uh, commissioners individually. This is something we've vetted at work sessions in the past, um, two or three times, probably going back to uh, 2019. Uh, it's also something that actually still exists on the commissioner's work plan. It was just sort of tabled indefinitely for, for a period of time. But it, it, essentially what it, is, what it would be is creating the position. And we have it listed here as community marketing coordinator, but I think we would probably like to make the re recommendation we would, the official title would be in community engagement coordinator. Um, it would create this position as a member of the finance administration team. This position would report directly to the county manager. It would be classified at a grade 19, which is a starting salary of, uh, I think, roughly around $21 an hour or $43,000 a year. So it's a professional um, level. So um, as you can see from the job description, which hasn't changed much since the last time it was on your work session agenda, it would, it would require um, experience and potentially either a bachelor's degree or equivalent <coughs> knowledge, skills, abilities to that. So this would be a position that would be um, uh, someone would need to bring some experience to the table. This would require someone to be a self-starter. This this person would be uh, in charge of really all aspects of our, our our outreach to the community, whether that's content on our website, whether that's managing our social media, whether that's handling all of our press releases, uh, doing our meeting wrap-ups, um, um, Managing and producing our um, uh, our YouTube stream, um, potentially uh, enhancing the way we broadcast these meetings. As a, as as we have, you know, as, as popular as I think is they have been, we have gotten some uh, recommendations from the public that we need better sound. We need <laughs> we need folks to um, potentially have different camera angles so they can see who's speaking. So they would be in charge of meeting production. Um, but anyway, it would require some level of professional knowledge, skills, abilities to be able to perform this. So anytime commissioners had um, um, things like um, uh, not just our work sessions, but if you have, if you're at, we're at community events, they're basically going to be covering everything we do as a government. Um, it, that would also be including um, things having to do with economic development, others uh, having to do with the uh, assisting promoting our rec programs, our, uh, the bluff, uh, pretty much all the programming that we do, they would work um, in conjunction with some of the other um, 
groups here in the county, like the chamber, some of the other um, uh, organizations like uh, that we partner with, whether that's EMC or or what have you. So uh, they'd be re they'd be required to do a lot of uh, nights, weekends. So it's it, it's a it's a job that would require um, more than just uh, a couple of months out of school, we're, we'll, we'll be looking for someone that's well written, well spoken, that will represent this board, and can do it fairly independently without a lot of um, management by me. So oversight by me, yes, but someone that's a self-starter and can and really generate good content and get get our message out, like I think Commissioner Ellington pointed out in our last meeting. So. Um, I'll, I'll stop there and, and uh, potentially answer any questions if you have any. Anybody have any questions for today? It's all written on this qualification thing. So. And I, all the questions I had was answered. I'm good with what. I, I, I do like changing the, uh, the title. So before I ask for a motion, I'll just, I mean, if, you know, it's about setting the expectations and I think you've done a great job with the job description and, and just what you just, you, you know, just, you know, just spoke to. Um, but for me, as, as, a, as, a, as a, just a, just a commissioner up here, you know, it's going to be, I'm going to set the bar really high for you because, I mean, we, we approved this. I mean, you know, as you, as you know, I mean, this is somebody that has got to be, uh, fiercely independent, passionate about the community, and loyal to this this board and and to the county, and uh, you know because the the main purpose of this, as Commissioner Ellington expressed in the last meeting, is you know we've got to we've got to tell our story, and it's not just to tell our story for for people that hey what are, what are these guys doing? But there is a little bit of that, but it's more about what are we doing as a community for folks that are within the community and for those outside the community that are interested in coming here. So I think it's, this is a, a key role. So when I say we're sitting the bar high for you, uh, you know, it's a long three-pointer for you. I know you're a basketball player, but this is a long <laughs> three-pointer. And I want nothing but net. Anybody else have anything? Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I would just add, based on those comments and of course what my also, my high level of ex expectations are, it, it may be difficult to find the right person, so we're, we're if it's approved, we will list it, but we all know what type of job market we're in, so we're looking for the right person, whoever that person is, and we won't. We're, we're not definitely, if for a position like this, absolutely not rushing to fill a spot. Because it's more than just credentials. It's, I mean, they gotta be a key member of the team. Right. I mean, they gotta work with you too. Because we are the community engagement specialist right now. <laughs> well, I like to think we all are. We all are. Yeah. So I do have one question. Um, is the salary comparable to some marketing coordinator positions? So I got that question. Um, it's probably a little lower, uh, but not by much. Um, but I would also say that. The ones that I looked at that are in other markets, the counties are a little bigger than we are. Um, not comparable size to us, so. Yeah, I just, I mean, you don't, you know, sometimes you pay for what you get for it, and if we're setting the bar that high, I, you know, just want to be, keep that in mind. Yeah. And of course, if, if, I mean, I'll report back to the board if it's not attracting the right person, so. Okay. Is there a motion on this? Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? So I have a motion made and seconded to uh, um, amend the uh, the budget to allow for the creation of this citizen engagement coordinator uh, and the terms as, as a job description terms as, as expressed. Here, no other discussion. Ms. Jones. Commissioner Wilder. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Commissioner Ellington. Yes. Chairman Allen. Yes. Okay. All right. Item I, as amended, was the discussion of the right of way on Indian Trail, and I know that we um, yesterday got got an email from Mr. English, 
So you want to just, just touch on that, highlight it? Yeah, I, I was asked to make a given opinion as to whether or not the portion of Indian Trail that we were considering or the job we were considering was county property owned by the county. And so I engaged the services of our abstractor and sent her the plats and the deed uh, and then got with her after she performed her job and we discussed uh, what the deed showed, what the plat showed, and I think it was both of our opinions uh, that the question area belonged to the county. And that's what I sent y'all up there. In my opinion, the county owns the property. Okay. Well, I appreciate your due diligence on this. Um, you know, going back and trying to gather facts you know, it's 20 years later, you know, whatever, well, what quite 20 years, but sometimes. So, so um, Jason and I discussed, you know, the, the path forward on this, and so I think we're of the opinion that it's for the purpose of the minutes to make sure that future boards, if this question comes up, that we, we have some sort of vote to um, um, ratify, I guess, be the term, the opinion. So, I apologize for interrupting. I was asked by Jason to send him a formal opinion, and I told him I'd get that to him next week, so that's coming. Okay. But that, you know, but in the meantime, we could we could go ahead and uh, uh, vote to formally include this as part of our uh, inventory of paved surfaces. So, is there a motion uh, on this? I'll make that motion. Okay. Is there a second? Second. So I have a motion made and seconded to uh, uh, adopt this portion of the Indian Trail as part of our paved road surface inventory. Any other discussion? Uh, I think we need to add it to our uh, valuation list for the paved roads. Next year's valuation, uh, look at the road. As we go out and uh, reassess roads, right. yeah, okay, um, and then um, all right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Miss Jones. Commissioner Wiley. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Watson. Yes. Commissioner Ellington. Yes. Chairman Allen. Yes. Mr. Chairman, when the county attorney provides that opinion, we can just put that on the consent agenda, and that will. Just great. And that, that way it'll be officially part of the record. So. Great. Mm -hmm. Great idea. All right. Next item J is mm -hmm. a purchase of sheriff's vehicle. Um, Jason, we'll just kind of touch a high, highlight on that. Sure, Mr. Why we're having that discussion. The, the sheriff had approached me um, a few days ago, um, and he, he provided me with the following information. But when he went to uh, the last uh, procurement we did for his vehicle replacement was through what's now called Southern Ford here in Thomaston. Um, we well, we purchased those vehicles at a price of uh, thirty-two thousand nine hundred eighty-three dollars. According to the staff there at Southern, they had mistakenly ordered one extra vehicle, uh, one more than we had or went ordered. So we picked up the vehicles that the board had approved, uh, but one identical vehicle to the to the five we procured so far sits on the lot. So, um, as the board also may be aware, um, some time ago. Um, one of our sheriff's vehicles was involved in an accident that resulted in a, um, a payment to the county from the, uh, from the other driver's insurance of 14907 That combined with a check that the sheriff's office was in receipt of for 16229 which was um, basically they'd had uh, after a a vehicle in, that had to do with a case in the court system had been sitting on his impound lot for quite some time. Uh, the, the, I guess the judge authorized the sale and the proceeds to be reimbursed to the county for us having to, uh, I think it, we, we were awarded $30 a day for however long that, that vehicle was there. So that, that combined with the insurance proceeds totaled about $31,137, which leaves about a balance of 
um, $1,845. And the sheriff had asked the board to consider uh, buying that last identical car from the lot with those proceeds. So if the board was interested in doing that, what the finance director and I would do was on your on your next consent agenda, we would have a, um, a budget amendment realizing these revenues and, uh, and also adding that expense to the budget. Um, you know, as far as uh, the way I look at it, my recommendation to the board would be to probably um, uh, accept this. They have it there. We, you know, we haven't even priced the ones from next year, so we would just um, do one less vehicle purchase next year and go ahead and take this one uh, at, at this price of uh, 32983 which they agreed to hold for the, for the other similar ones. So. Um, the sheriff had proposed that to me. I, you know, I think it, it probably makes sense to do it, um, and we would just count that towards the one less for the procurement cycle for next year. Was so that car total? It was. And we only got fourteen thousand uh, dollars. It was a. I don't remember what model year it was. It was about a four or five year old vehicle, I think. So the balance of eighteen thousand nine hundred. Eighteen thousand forty-five dollars. I mean, eighteen hundred forty-five dollars would come from the sheriff's budget. The sheriff's general fund budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We would, uh, if the board authorizes the purchase tonight, we would have the budget amendment on the consent agenda for the next meeting. Okay. So, you, so you have a recommendation from staff to authorize a budget, uh, I mean, authorize the purchase of this this vehicle. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? So a motion made and seconded to approve the purchase of the vehicle um, uh, that is out there. And, and, and there were the, okay, that's good. All right, I, re I restated it appropriately. Right. Approve the purchase of the vehicle. Now, discussion. We going to sell that wrecked car? get the proceeds off it too and not sit over there at the sheriff's lot for I uh, oh, I, I want to and I can if I may sure. Mr. Chairman uh, I, I believe that was included in the list of 10 that he sent us or do you know we'll confirm I, yeah <clears throat> I'm 90 percent sure but I want to confirm that I, I think that because this accident I think was what roughly three and a half months ago so the sheriff sent us a list of 10 surplus vehicles um, two weeks ago, and I believe that was included here. We have not done anything with those vehicles just yet. We have taken them off our insurance, right? I've not seen them. I don't think I've seen it either. Okay. Mm -hmm. We need to... Okay. You got the email. I did. I got it. So I yeah. just assumed. Anyway, we just need to validate that sure. we've removed those from my inventory. And, and then surplus them appropriately <clears throat> but I'll, I'll confirm that uh, okay any other discussion miss jones commissioner Wilder. yes commissioner jones yes commissioner watson yes commissioner ellington yes Chairman Allen. yes okay uh next on the agenda is an executive session after the executive session i don't see uh there's a going to be no no votes or anything like that so you're welcome to stay if you'd like and watch us come back and go back in open session and then adjourn but uh with that uh, before we go into that uh if are there comments and i know jason you've got some yeah and i submitted mine in writing mr yeah. chairman um I pro uh, and i provided it to you electronically there's a couple of updates from emc uh one on courthouse landscaping plan one on um uh, uh, surface treatment, which has been a hot topic lately. Um, an update on Andrews Chapel School and where we're going with that. There was uh, an updated um, uh, four, four bullet, bullet point, a um, little bit of information on our COVID call today that we have um, weekly. And then the last one was an updated um, courthouse roof restoration project schedule um, that included the revised date for the COVID installation. All, I submitted all that by uh, yeah. in a written report. So, so, so just for the interest of everyone here, so the revised schedule for the courthouse is now 
I've got it here, but I'm playing games with my phone, flipping over. Is it, are we still in October? Uh, I'm looking here. Uh, yeah, late October. For the so we're in late fall. October. Mm -hmm. We're we're getting close to that uh, that desire to have some Christmas lights on the courthouse before <laughs> holidays. So we're we're now looking like in November they're, time. They're they're mobilized on the twenty seventh. So you'll start seeing pieces of it arrive to the parking lot, and I, I think we're going to work with the city to try to stage the pieces. Um, over on the other side of the, the complex here on the back part of the parking lot. So they'll start to arrive from Kentucky on the 27th according to this and then the install first, oh wait first two weeks of November install yeah with uh, they're saying they'll be complete with final connection right before Thanksgiving. Well, they go ahead and just go ahead and change the light bulbs in there. And make them green and red. <laughs> the clock's already green, isn't it? I'm just kidding, folks. I'm just kidding. The clock is not green. Or digital. Or digital. Know, digital. This um, um, pandemic just pushed everything away. You know, it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. We should have already been dancing on the roof by now. It needs to be. I mean, I mean, I know some things are beyond their control, but. If we can, it's time to start making them a little uncomfortable. Uh, we, you know, we, want, we, we need this done. It's just, it's just taking way too long. Um, and then the, um, what was the other one? Everybody, everybody got the attachment on it. I mean, I, it was hard for me to read because I need to print it out, get bigger. The uh, landscape you know, plan yeah, for I the courthouse. You know, I got some discussion about that. Yeah, I mean, is that is that something we need to consider as part of uh, maybe our next work session? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's it's a good time now to because we all know, you know, as soon as we go up there and start planting things, mm -hmm. everybody's going to ask us, well, why'd you plant that? Mm -hmm. I mean, some people just can't stand crepe myrtles. And, and anyway, so it's it's a good time now to kind of socialize that and uh, get that out there so if anybody has any comments on it. Maybe, you know, we talked about getting a, uh, uh, a display. Maybe we can follow back up with EMC and if we can get that and post it out here so that people can walk by, they can look at it and see at least what we're thinking about. And uh, I don't know if there's a way to get it on our website. Are we talking about getting an engagement specialist <laughs> here just a few minutes ago? If we can get that stuff out there, I mean, so that, I mean we don't want to do this in a vacuum. I, you know, and, and, and to touch on that, and I want to be plain for Dave here and, and, and the people watching, the people here, you know, part of this plan is, uh, you know, uh, is the magnolia trees, they're not part of the plan. They're going to, the plan is to remove the magnolia trees, not because we don't like the magnolia trees, because they are harmful to the foundation and the infrastructure of the building. I think just to paraphrase off something you said in the past that, that we got from the arborist, that they're great trees, they're healthy trees, and they're beautiful trees. They're just in the wrong place. Uh, and we're spending a lot of taxpayer money to fix that building up, and I think it will be, you know, we, we will be neglecting our duties if we did not bring that up and look to solve that issue. So I want to be clear about that. I mean, I, you know, I, and, and even if we say it tonight, it's, it's going to come up. Well, I didn't know. I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you thought about that. It isn't something that we take lightly, but when the experts tell you that it's not working and it's harming the building and the infrastructure, you got to listen to them. If that, if that tree was that close to your house, would you just let it be there? And I'm sure there's people who say, oh, well, we got to keep the trees. Beautiful tree. We don't want to see it go. But we got to make tough decisions. So I, I want that message to get out. We're talking about removing the trees from the courthouse and replacing them with something else. Yeah. And again, public comments tonight. There's nobody here, so you know, please, folks, we we want to hear from you. So and any, you complete your comments. It does. Thank you, Mr. Jessica, Jessica do you have anything for us? Mr. English, you have any no. time for Mr. Wall? I don't have anything. 
Mr. Jones. The only thing I got is I appreciate y'all coming. Michelle. Uh, yeah, it's really, it, it's community business. It really isn't county business. But I, I just asked everybody, you know, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of good people in this in this Thompson and Upson County that have lost their fight with COVID. Uh, I just asked you to reflect on that and, and remember their families. And uh, hey, it's, 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 hit, it's hit us hard. I mean, I, I can name several folks. I won't, won't name any names tonight because I'd leave somebody out, but we lost some great people in the last five or six weeks. Uh, and it hit hard, and I just asked everybody to keep those families in their thoughts and prayers. That's all I got, Mr. Chairman. I echo those sentiments 100%. I mean, it's 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 amazing. Uh, you know, when you when you when you hear it, when it's one thing to hear it on a conference call, and you, and you hear what the situation is at the hospital, but it's a whole another thing when you start seeing the names of folks that you know you, you know. I don't consider myself to be be old. I may be older, but I'm not old yet. I don't consider anybody in this room to be old. But when you start seeing the names of folks that are younger than you and, and, and classmates that went to school with you, it's 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 a uh, it's eye popping. And uh, you know, and, and, you know, there's there's a common denominator. And look, you know, people have a right to make the choices to do what they they want to do, uh, but. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad I got the vaccine. And I'll be standing in line to get the booster when it's available. Because the data, you know, I'm, I'm a data guy. I like, to, I like to see the data, and the data is clear that if you are vaccinated, the likelihood of you being in a hospital on a ventilator is significantly reduced. So uh, the, the likelihood of you spreading this, this disease is, uh, they, they say, is significantly reduced. So I just ask people to do the right thing. And like Mr. Allen said, keep those families in your thoughts and prayers because uh, it, you know, we are some, some folks are passing away way too, too early. So with that, any old by the ways? Yes. Oh. Um, I do have one thing. Just to touch on the design mm -hmm. um, part of these. It just has an update. Next Friday is the mandatory pre-proposal meeting for the design services uh, RFP, well, architectural design services. And when is the uh, final date for the full package to be due? October, middle of October. Middle of October. Yeah. So it's about 22, 21 days from now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that we, we expect there'll be a significant amount of interest in, in that. I believe so. so yes. But I think, you know, with our CMARs on board and as a part of that committee, we can vet through those and potentially do something similar that we did with their proposals and hone it down a little bit. Because you guys are going to be in the community for a while. You know, you want to just introduce yourselves real quick. I know S Sam Turner. And your job is? I'm the on site superintendent. There you go, sir. And I'm Dave Uvas. I'm vice president of the parish. There you go. So, Dave, there you go. That's the guy's going to make it happen right there. So. Absolutely. Dave Piper Fund 101. <laughs> you got a scar right here. Please go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Put him in your phone because he'll call you. Any other, oh, by the ways? Okay. I appreciate everybody coming out tonight as well. So I need a motion to go into executive session. And the purpose for executive session tonight is real estate and personnel. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Thank y'all. We are still live. Keep that. Do you want me to come for the first part? Uh, yes. Yeah, that would be what you done. Doug. I don't, I don't need all this. I mean, there's a, a lot of plans there. Thank y'all. Congratulations. Yeah, we've been playing full tag. We've had it in the neck. I can tell you what. I'll give you that. When you're done with it, can you bring it back? Friday.
49. All I need is I'm just going to let him have my packet. I'm just going to drop off my note. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome.
We're live. Okay, so gentlemen, we're out of executive session. Chair, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? second. We're adjourned. Thank you.